Hello viewers, in this lesson we will learn about several kinds of banks and their functions. Objectives, commercial banks, industrial banks, cooperative banks, other kinds of banks. Viewers, now we will examine the nature and functions of commercial banks. The most significant function of banking is to accept deposits from the public and also grant loans which can be termed as creation of credit. A commercial bank is a kind of bank which provides multifarious services along with providing basic services to public like acceptance of deposits, granting of various loans and offering various products relating to investments. In the modern banking system, the commercial bank could be a bank by itself or could be a division of a mighty banking institution which would provide varied services to individuals, institutions, organizations and even to the government. The commercial banks in India are functioning in both private and public sectors. The commercial banks are considered to be the oldest banks. They have a very wider area of business and multiple branches. The commercial banks in India carry a very high public confidence and according to the research observers, these banks command a highest share in the overall banking operations. The commercial banks in the present globalization scenario carry multi-dimensional activities which include business, industrial, agricultural funding and also merchant banking. Viewers, now we will examine the role and functions of commercial banks. The role and functions of commercial banks differ from country to country. As for example, in the United States of America, at the present, the commercial banks are restricted to only banking activities. They don't undertake capital market activities. Capital market activities are carried by the investment banks. In Indian scenario, Today, commercial banks carry multiple functions as for example, most of the commercial banks carry the capital market activities. Even though specialized agricultural finance banks are established by the governments, the commercial banks finance agriculture sector also. In India, several commercial banks were established as corporate entities by private individuals and organizations and later on the state took control of the same. The state started conducting banking operations by establishing state-owned banks like State Bank of India and its subsidiary banks through enacting legislations like SBI Act 1955 and also by the process of nationalizing some existing banks. The commercial banks in India play a very significant and pragmatic role in increasing the gross domestic product through their multifarious functions. With the ever-expanding banking activities which are globalized today in India, the commercial banks discharge the following functions. Accepting several types of deposits from public by opening various accounts like savings bank accounts, recurring deposit accounts, fixed deposit accounts and like ones. Providing various kinds of loans and advances like personal loans, professional loans, agricultural loans, industrial loans, 
housing loans, educational loans and like ones. Providing services like collecting and clearing of checks, dividend warrants and personal services like payment of rents, rates, insurance premiums, collecting tax returns and proceeds and like ones. Providing bank drafts, bankers checks, money transfers and like services. Providing foreign exchange services. Acting as agents, trustees, attorneys, executors, administrators and like functions. Providing managerial services like cash management, treasury management, equity financing and management and like ones. Providing utility services like merchant banking, safety lockers and like ones. Providing overdraft facility, cash credit facility, travelers checks facility. Issuing letters of credit, bank guarantees, performance bonds, securities. Taking up underwriting commitments. Maintaining interfinancial institutions relationships. Providing credit and debit cards, providing secured and unsecured loans, retail and other kinds of banking services and carry all kinds of activities of banking in financial services to the general public, institutions, organizations and even to the state and thus directly and indirectly contributing for economic and social welfare and growth of the economy and gross domestic product of India. Viewers, now we will learn about the structure of commercial banks in India. In India, commercial banks are run by both the state and the private sector. Slowly, the governments are leaning towards joint sector, that is the participation of both state and the private individuals, institutions and organizations. The state-run banks are termed as public sector banks. In independent India, the first set of public sector banks started with the conversion of Imperial Bank of India of British Raj into the State Bank of India in the year 1955 and the subsequent establishment of its subsidiary banks. On 19 July 1969, 14 major corporate banks were nationalized followed by six more commercial banks on 15th April 1980. Today, in India, at the present, 27 public sector banks and 66 private banks are functioning. The private sector banks include foreign banks also, which have established branches in India like HSBC, Citibank, Standard Chartered Bank and the like ones. Viewers, we will now examine the meaning and functions of industrial banks. Industrial banks are also termed as industrial development banks and an integral part of the concept of development banking. Development banking is a global phenomenon. Industrial banks exclusively provide loans for industrial development. At all India level, the prominent industrial development banks are the Industrial Development Bank of India, Small Industries Development Bank of India, Industrial Finance Corporation of India Limited, Industrial Credit and Investment Corporation of India Limited, Industrial Investment Bank of India Limited and these organizations also have subsidiary companies. At the state level, state financial corporations and state industrial development corporations and like organizations are providing industrial finance. Banks like Industrial Credit and Investment Corporation of India, Industrial Development Bank of India also started in recent times retail and commercial banking. Industrial financing is different from the functioning of commercial banks. Basically, these banks provide finance facility to industrial projects. Industrial banks have a limited scope of service. In some foreign countries, these banks are also known as Morris banks or industrial loan companies. 
Some industrial banks also accept customer deposits and sell investment shares and take up merchant banking. Role and functions of industrial banks. The industrial banks play a very pivotal role in the country's economic growth and increasing the rate of gross domestic product through their multifarious industrial financing and their economic activities. These banks discharge the following functions. Providing planning for promoting and developing industries. Providing technical and administrative support for promotion and management of industry. Providing technical and administrative support for expansion of industry. Providing refinance facilities. Providing underwriting facilities and also purchasing underwriting shares and debentures of the industrial companies. Guaranteeing deferred payments due from industrial concerns and for loans raised by them. Taking up market and investment research, research service. Undertaking techno-economic studies to help the development of industries. Rediscounting of bills. Providing seed capital assistance to new enterprises. Providing project financial assistance by way of long-term and short-term loans. Underwriting of equity, preference and debenture issues. Subscribing equity, preference and debenture issues. Guaranteeing of loans raised in foreign currency from foreign financial institutions. Providing merchant banking and allied services. Providing equipment financing, equipment leasing, equipment procurement, equipment credit, installment credit, supplier's credit and buyer's credit. Providing fund support for technical consultancy, risk capital, venture capital, development of technology, tourism, entrepreneurship development and development of science and technology. Providing rehabilitation of sick industrial units. Providing various other facilities for the promotion, management and sustenance of industries. The industrial banks play an equally indispensable role in the economic and industrial growth of the Indian economy on par with the commercial and other types of banks. Viewers, we will now learn about the cooperative banks. The concept of cooperative banks was promoted during the development of cooperative movement in India. Banks should be either statutory banks or corporate entities. As corporate entities, they must be incorporated either under the Companies Act 2013 or any previous Companies Act or the Cooperative Societies Act. The state governments passed their own Cooperative Societies Acts like the AP Cooperative Societies Act 1964. There is another central legislation called Multi-State Cooperative Societies Act 2002. By registering a cooperative society under the above Cooperative Societies Acts, Banking business can be carried and those banks are called cooperative banks. The cooperative banks, even though perform the basic functions of banking, differ from the commercial banks in many ways. Cooperative banking carry retail and commercial banking organized on a cooperative basis. The system of cooperative banking prevails all over the globe. These banks take deposits and lend money. The services include retail banking carried out by credit unions, mutual savings banks, building societies and cooperatives and the like ones. Role and functions of cooperative banks. The cooperative banks play an integral role in rural development in India. 
they play a very significant role in promotion of cooperative movement in both urban and rural parts of india the prominent functions of cooperative banks are as follows the cooperative banks function in a three tier setup with the state cooperative bank as the apex institution in the state central oblique district cooperative banks functioning at the district level and primary credit societies functioning at the village level unlike the commercial banks which are organized on a unitary basis the cooperative banks function within a restricted given area as notified in the statute and the rules thereon basically the cooperative banks function in the rural india financing agricultural and allied activity the cooperative banks are governed by only few sections of the banking regulation act 1949 unlike the commercial banks which attract all the provisions of the banking regulation act the control of the reserve bank of india is partial over the cooperative banks in comparison with the commercial and other kinds of banks cooperative banks function basically on the principle of cooperation in tune with the cooperative movement the reserve bank of india has granted several concessions including interest rates for the functioning of the cooperative banks some of the organizations carrying the business of micro credit and micro finance function on cooperative model micro credit is provided for small business concerns the cooperative banks are functioning in both public as well as private sectors and providing cheap credit to the members and also providing a great source of rural credit for agricultural operations in india viewers now we will learn about another type of cooperative banks called land development banks for providing long term credit facilities to the agricultural sector another type of cooperative banks are developed known as land development banks these banks have a two tier structure one at the state level under the name of central land development banks and another at the district or taluk level known as primary land development banks in some states like jammu and kashmir up and gujarat the structure is unitary that is only one apex land development bank operates throughout the state with its own branches these banks raise their resources in multiple ways and they also float debentures in the market which carry the guarantee of the government the debentures also are subscribed by the state and central governments life insurance corporation of india commercial banks and other land development banks as a policy of mutual support the governments state cooperative banks and also the national bank for agriculture and rural development have provided facilities like refinancing short term accommodation to these land development banks to enable them to provide to the farmers the agricultural equipment machinery tractors and to provide facilities for improvement of land like leveling bunding reclamation fencing digging of new wells and repairs to old wells the loans are granted by these land development banks on the security of the mortgage of immobile property provided by the farmers the cooperative banks are of a great help for farmers middle income group persons and people in need of microfinancing viewers there are various other kinds of banks carrying banking operations such some important banks are discussed now development banks development banks are financial institutions whose basic objective is to provide specialized financial assistance for the business and agricultural sectors business here includes trade commerce and industry thus development banks include industrial banks the functional spectrum of development banks is very wider 
than industrial banks as industrial banks exclusively finance for industrial activity whereas development banks finance business and agricultural sectors and business means as stated for trade commerce and industry these banks provide finance to both private and public sectors these banks are viewed as multi purpose financial institutions and their activities include promotion of savings and investment attitude in the public granting term loans investment in securities and providing finance to medium and large scale industries and business concerns the development banking was introduced in the world after the second world war as the development banks started at that point of time provided finance to reconstruct the properties buildings and industries which were destroyed in the war in india the development banking was adopted after independence the basic concept is that these banks should provide finance on subsidized interest rate for the promotion and development of agriculture import and export housing development industry and other business activities the funding is aimed at the growth and development of the economy in particular and the society in general mostly the development banks in india are in the public sector on the industrial sector the prominent development banks are industrial development bank of india industrial finance corporation of india which is the first development bank in india started in the year 1948 and small industries development bank of india on the agricultural sector national bank for agriculture and rural development is very prominent on export and import development the export import bank of india is playing a very pivotal role on the housing development the national housing bank is the major contributor in india development banks fund by way of equity capital as well as loan capital they are funding innumerable number of new and upcoming business concerns projects and economic development projects the functions are multifarious however mostly these banks do not undertake microfinancing that is financing for very small businessmen the functions of development banks are narrated here under providing all types of financial assistance to business units providing long term medium and short term loans for starting as well as development of business taking up all promotional activities of business that is trade commerce and industry acting as underwriters providing investment and guarantee operations taking up such activities for the economic development of country and also contribute for the balanced regional growth encouraging new and small entrepreneurs providing financial assistance to both public and private sectors filling up the deficiencies of the present financial facilities which are already being provided by the conventional banks and financial institutions to function with an objective to serve public interest more than making profits and work in the best interest of the country and contribute for the growth of gdp that is gross domestic product thus the development banks have a very larger role to play in the country's economic development their activities are at a macro level whereas the industrial banks function in micro level mostly working on industrial finance at the global level the asian development bank is the best example of a development bank viewers now we will examine another important concept as well as activity of banking in the world termed as retail banking which is mostly carried by the commercial banks retail banking means providing banking services to individual customers also called retail customers directly this type of banking is also referred to as consumer banking or personal banking in the present day scenario 
no bank exclusively provides only retail banking services normally retail banking services are provided by different divisions of banks whether large or small retail banking provides a very wide range of products and services and commercial banks provide their multifold products and services to individual customers along with corporate and institutional customers retail banking facilitates large quantity of customer deposits which would be used by the banks concerned to make loans to their respective retail business institutional and other corporate customers retail banking today plays a very pivotal role in the growth and development of indian economy in particular and the global economy in general all over the globe the retail banking plays equally a very important role on par with other kinds of banking depending upon the needs of the individuals institutions business and corporate clients appropriate kind of bank has to be chosen by the banking customers in present day scenario all the aforementioned kinds of banks carry multiple banking activities but the special kinds of banks like industrial banks cooperative banks provide specialized services to the named class of customers the commercial banks provide today all kinds of banking services to different variety and cadre of customers apart from these banks there are other kinds of banks like regional rural banks which help the rural public with retail banking and also granting agricultural and personal loans further institutions like life insurance corporation of india unit trust of india general insurance corporation of india discount and finance house of india limited export credit guarantee corporation of india limited deposit insurance and credit guarantee corporation of india fully owned by the reserve bank of india and the like government institutions are providing further cushion for the smooth functioning of banks in india well viewers we have learnt several issues in this lesson on kinds of banking we will learn more about this particular banking aspects in the forthcoming lessons thank you